It's been a slow burn on the Korean Peninsula to get where we are today. Let's go all the way back to understand this better. The history comes courtesy of BBC. In 1945, World War II ended. The U.S. battleship Missouri in Tokyo Bay was the setting for the signing of the surrender terms, which officially brought the war with Japan to an end. Japan no longer ruled Korea, and it split in two. The Soviet Union occupied the North, and the United States was in the South. Three years later, 1948, Kim Il-sung is installed as the Soviet-backed leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea. He was in power all throughout the Korean War, 1950 to 53. Throughout the 60s and 70s, North Korea ramped up its industrial and defense ambitions, and according to a CIA document, captured secret agents revealed that the North had begun sending them into South Korea on guerrilla missions to subvert the democratic nation. A few years later, Grenada invasion, late report. The U.S. invaded Grenada, which is a tiny island, as you know, in the southern Caribbean. A Washington Post analysis pegs this as the genesis of North Korea's nuclear determination. They're thinking, quote, if the United States could perceive even a small spice island as a threat, so too could it eventually train its sights on North Korea. Then it was off to the arms races. 1985, Kim Il-sung joined the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. In 1986, next year, he had a research nuclear reactor up and running. Skip forward to 1993, North Korea test fires a medium-range ballistic missile into the Sea of Japan. President Clinton was motivated to get this under control, and he struck a deal called the Agreed Framework in 94. The same year, Kim Jong-il took the throne. It shut down the North's nuclear program in return for two things, oil and diplomatic relations, or so they thought. 1995, another covert nuclear program was found. Things kick into overdrive here. In 1996, North Korea sends troops into the demilitarized zone. 98, it fires a long-range rocket over Japan. By 2000, the Clinton administration thought it had an agreement to disarm the North of its nukes, but key figures in those talks say the deal fell apart after George W. Bush was elected. Two years later, 2002, North Korea kicks out UN inspectors and reactivates a nuclear facility. A few months later, in 2003, they had enough plutonium on hand for six nuclear bombs. Also in 2003... A development of great importance, Muammar al-Qaddafi, publicly confirmed his commitment to disclose and dismantle all weapons of mass destruction programs in his country. Kim Jong-il no doubt watched Muammar Gaddafi of Libya's decision to disarm and... There is Gaddafi, dazed, gravely wounded, but still alive dragged through the streets after his convoy was bombed. What happened after the U.S. helped oust him years later? A lesson North Korea's foreign ministry explicitly credited with teaching the international community that disarmament was a, quote, invasion tactic of the West. 2006, a nuclear test in an underground facility, sparking new sanctions by the U.N. These tests and provocations continued until Kim Jong-il's death in 2011. His son, Kim Jong-un, has stepped up the nuclear program ever since, propelling it forward faster than anyone expected. He now has long-range missiles, reportedly has warheads that can fit on those missiles, and recently logged a series of successful tests. That's where we find ourselves today in the 70 years that got us here.